Hey, what's up guys? Today, we're talking knives. Not just any knives, we're talking case knives. I wanna get back to the basics. And uh, the biggest purpose of this video is to teach you guys how to read the tank stamps on your case knives because they all tell a story. They tell you all about your knife. And in most cases, at least newer generations, maybe some of the younger viewers, you inherit these knives you know, from family members, maybe they're given to you by fathers or grandfathers or great-grandfathers, and uh, you don't know a whole lot about them. So this video is gonna tell you exactly how to figure out what knife you have, all right? Because all those little numbers and letters, they all mean something. And it's, it's very, once you understand the concept of how they have the system set up, you'll be able to read these all day long and figure out what you have, and that's a pretty cool thing. Another part of this video is to basically get back to the roots of knives. You know, we have all this modern technology and all these great new tactical folders, and they're awesome. And as, as far as the knife industry goes, it, it seems like as years go on, we're trying to make the folding knife stronger and stronger and stronger. And I think that's great, there's nothing wrong with that. But keep in mind, when you're having an argument with someone on the internet about this lock stronger than that lock, and you know, your knife's not strong enough, and blah, 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 uh, talking about the latest and the greatest. Uh, folding knives for hundreds of years had no locks. They're slip joints. They were kept open by the pressure of a back spring. Uh, and guess what? <laughs> they worked fantastic for thousands of people, men and women alike, even kids. You know, it was routine for you know, a young boy to have a pen knife in his pocket. It was just part of his attire. It was his EDC. It wasn't, you know, there wasn't no second thoughts about it. Kids brought knives to school, no one got stabbed, you know, no one got, uh, you know, arrested. It was a different era. Uh, knives were tools. It was no different than having a fork in your hand at lunchtime, you know. But times have changed, and uh, with modern technologies, there's no need to have a knife, right? Bull crap. Every single day, people use knives. Every day. Think about with all the new computers we have and all the new technology and all this, all this crazy stuff we have in modern day society. What are the two most important things that keep us alive and keep us going? Sharp stuff and fire. <laughs> Man's first two loves and first two creations that basically kept us alive, you know? Fire and edge tools. So I just, I find them very fascinating, both fire and knives. But anyway, um, like I said, this video I'm going to teach you all about how to read the, the tank stamps here, as well as uh, talk about these two specific knives. I'm going to focus more on this one because the tank stamp is a little more legible just due to the shape and, and where it is and so forth. This is a little bit of an older one. This is like a mid-90s, and you can tell by the, uh, the logo, the case logo. And this is a more modern one, and I'll tell you how to read that as well. So I think you're going to find this very informative, um, but besides just teaching you how to read these knives, I kind of want to spark the interest in both young viewers and old viewers, because there's a lot of guys out there, maybe in their 40s and 50s, not that 40s is old by any means, but older. 40s, 50s, 60s, maybe 70s. These are the knives you grew up with, you used, your father used, your grandfather used. You know, these are the knives that you probably have, and maybe not have forgotten, but kind of put on the back shelf. Maybe they're getting dusty because you're getting the newest, greatest Striders and the Sebenzas and you know, the, the best new Spyderco that pops out, you know, or these new custom knives. And these things kind of get forgotten. It's not a lost art because there's still thousands of people buying these every day. And there's lots of collectors out there getting these. But I also think that I want to fill kind of a niche that's missing. And on YouTube, it's very much tactical knives. And there's nothing wrong with that. I love them. It's my preferred knife. However, I want to see more people start doing videos on beautiful traditional folders like this, okay, slip joints. Uh, because there's just, there's a slew of them out there and they're amazing, they're beautiful, they're very functional, and they're little works of art. And I wanna talk about them. And uh, like I said, maybe, maybe give some information to some of the younger viewers. I know a lot of kids and stuff, they, they may, not really kids, but teenagers, you may look at knives like this and they kind of maybe seem boring to you and it's not as cool, you can't flick them out, you know, they're not, intimidating, you know, or just, just generally cool to, to a lot of younger viewers. Some viewers are different. Of course, there's always exceptions. But um, I'm here to tell you that they're very cool and they are very functional. And man has been using folding knives with no locks for a really long time. So you don't need to argue that the lock back is not as good as a triad lock and a frame lock is so much better than a liner lock. If you're using a folding knife properly, you don't need a lock at all. 
All right, that's what some people tend to forget. Um, the Foley knife is just that, it's a Foley knife. It doesn't have the strength of a fixed blade. If your Foley knife can't get the job done, uh, and it's too fragile for what you need it for, you need to get the right tool for the job and get yourself a sturdy fixed blade. But that's just a matter of opinion. So first of all, there are, there's thousands and thousands of different types of slip joints, okay? Now this top one's not really a slip joint, it happens to be a locking uh, case knife. Uh, it's a copper head pattern but it has a lock, so it's now known as the copper lock. It's a full-size copper lock. Happens to have some uh, um, charred white bone with some worm groove jigging. And all these terms probably sound foreign to a lot of people, but it's all stuff you can learn about, and it's very cool and very exciting. And if you're into collecting knives, not just using them, but collecting them, case knives are where it's at. They've been around since 1905. They're one of the biggest companies that are collected all around the world from all different walks of life. Some people like myself in the past, I've tend to collect certain types of patterns. There's just, there's so many patterns out there. This is a copper lock, full size. This is a mini trapper. This is a unique trapper too, because not only is the blade Damascus, which you don't see too often, but uh, it's also a Warncliffe blade in a trapper pattern. A little unique and unusual, but there's just, there's so many different patterns. You guys know that I, I also collect six bladed stockmans right, or five plus bladed stockmans at this point. Uh, I also happen to prefer um, mini Texas toothpicks. A few more different patterns, just a few. Um, muskrat. Uh, trappers come in all forms and, you know, single bladed trappers, two bladed trappers, large trappers, tiny trappers, jumbo trappers, uh, trapper nut, trapper locks. Um, but there's all different shapes. Uh, whittlers or whittlers. Whittlers didn't sound that good, did it? <laughs> it sounded kind of strange. That came out funny. Uh, tuxedo, very cool small knife, which I have. I'll show you in future videos. Um, all kinds of stockments. Large, small, medium, tiny, jumbo. Three-bladed, four-bladed, five-bladed, six-bladed, one-bladed, you know. Um, regular old standard lockback knives. You know, mini hunters that have a pocket clip and a, you know, thumb. Um, Thumb stud and a liner lock, you know, which is non-traditional. It's more of an advanced. It's it's a little bit of a sturdier knife. That's why it's called the Hunter. Uh, all different Congress patterns. Uh, what else? Melon tester. That's a cool one. That's very long and and slender. And it's just how the name implies. It's for basically slicing fruit, tasting fruit. If you're a fruit farmer, I suppose. Uh, muskrats are cool. They have two long, slender blades. Uh, the moose pattern is something that I haven't seen in a long time. That's a little bit more rare. We don't see those as often. Norfolk, that's another one that's not so often seen. Peanuts, which is a little bit more of a common pattern. Large peanut, small peanut. Um, shark tooth, ridgeback, saddle horn, a peasant knife, um, just straight up jackknife. Sodbusters and Sodbuster Juniors. Those are very cool, a little beefier. Still non-locking, still slip joints, but definitely beefier knives. Uh, sunfish, or otherwise known as the elephant toenails. Um, Swayback Gent, Swayback Jack. What else? There's so many. Sow Belly. Oh man, I, I can't even think of all of them. Uh, electrician's knife, Eisenhower, hobos. I showed hobos recently. That's the kind of fork and knife combo or fork, knife, and spoon. And the list goes on and on and on. Um, and, and there's all kinds of you know, variations on these. Gardening knife or pruning knife. That is a very extreme hawkbill blade. But anyway, you know, the list goes on and on. I don't want to bore you with that. But just I want to give you just like, wow, you know, yeah, there's tons and tons of different Shapes, those are just shapes. All those names I mentioned, they're just different styles, okay? All those have different variations on how many blades there are, how big they are, you know, they could be minis, they could be mediums, they could be, you know, standard size ones, they could be large ones. Um, handle materials, there's so many different handle materials. And then if you stick with one material like bone, bone is a very common material. Um, it's a lot cheaper than uh, getting stag or antler. You know, some of the more exotic, natural materials like mother of pearl, you know, uh, abalone, stuff like that. 
Um, bone was very heavily used because it was affordable. It was easy to get. And you can do so much stuff with bone. You can dye it any color you want. There's, there's hundreds of different colors. Jigging patterns, you know, these are two totally different jigging patterns. This is a worm groove pattern. I don't remember what this one is offhand. Actually, no, it's a Crandall, I believe, which is kind of like a random looking apple seed jig. But all different jigging patterns. Um, blade steels, I mean, obviously, th this one's a stainless steel blade, which I'll show you in the markings, how you know that. And this one happens to be a Damascus blade. Blade shapes, blade sizes, I mean, it's just, it's endless. It really is endless, so this is a collector's dream. And what's awesome about the case knives is that all their markings do mean something. So again, as a collector, it gives you very important information that you want to know about that knife. So let's stop babbling about all the variety and start talking about what these numbers and letters mean. Now I'm going to show you this one briefly, but it's hard to see some of the tank stamp. So I'm going to switch over to this one for the example. And I'll draw on a piece of paper to give you a better understanding as well as I'm talking. But first off, I can tell you just by looking at this logo, this is an older logo. The uh, cursive kind of C that underlines case and case having the, um, you know, kind of lightning bolt S, both in case as well as USA. This dates, this specific logo dates to uh, the mid 90s. I think from 93 to 99 is when this logo was used, okay? Uh, very similar to Zippo lighters. What do you know? If you didn't know, Zippo, the company that makes the lighters, own case knives. They have for many years. Um, so this is an older one. This is a 90s uh, copper lock. Now underneath, it's hard to make out all the letters, but towards the end here, you can kind of see the 49 LSS. SS stands for stainless steel. You'll also see CV or D. D is Damascus, which we'll see on this one. CV is chrome vanadium. These are just the different types of blade steels that Case uses, okay? Now, they're kind of trademark secrets. Stainless steel, but they don't tell you exactly what kind. That's just their deal. That's fine. Uh, same with, you know, Damascus. They don't know what the makeup of the Damascus is, but that's just how they roll. <laughs> and that's okay. Um, the 49L. Now, the 49 uh, is representing the pattern number, and I'll explain more of this in detail in a minute. But the pattern number 49 happens to be copper head. But they added an L because this is a locking version of the copper head, so this makes this a copper lock. Okay, so that's just a little bit trickier than most of them. But anyway, it's hard to make out the first three. Uh, actually, no, I can see it here. 615. The 6 represents the handle material, which I happen to know offhand that is bone. Plus, I can physically see it's bone. And the 15 is the, uh, the jigging pattern, which in this case is a worm groove. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Now, not all models have the jigging pattern on here. Okay, uh, in fact, this one does not show the jigging pattern on there, but I'll, I'll go over that in a minute. Just want to give you a quick example of this one. So pretty interesting stuff. Now, before I look at this one, let's break a pen and paper out and kind of uh, break this break this down a little bit. Now, I'm going to give you the numbers from this one, but then we'll actually look at the stamp. All right, how it looks is you got a bunch of little X's and circles and stuff like that. Then you have the case logo, right? A couple little X's and circles underneath it. All the modern ones kind of look like this and all these things mean something, all right? Which I'll go over in a second. Then underneath you have a couple numbers. I believe this is 6107, right? And I think the D is underneath maybe. So anyway, the D right off the bat stands for Damascus, okay? So that's pretty easy because there's only three markings you're gonna see for blade blade steel. It's either going to be Damascus, CV for the chrome vanadium, or SS for stainless steel. Okay, so that's an easy one, right? Now, the first number will always represent the handle material. Okay, so this six represents handle material. All right. Now, the next number, it could be um, a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six. I think it goes up to nine. Um, but generally speaking, it'll, it'll be one through four, okay? This number, I'll put a square around it so it's different. This represents how many blades are in this pattern. So if you happen to have like a four-bladed Stockman and the number here is five, perhaps a blade was broken off that you just didn't notice. So that's good to know. But it will tell you how many blades there are in that model, okay? So this is how many blades there are. Pretty easy. In this specific case, I know it's a one because it's single bladed. 
Now the 07, the last two digits are gonna represent the pattern number. All right, now it doesn't necessarily have to be two. Some are three, some are one. It's all gonna you know, change depending really on when it was made because they did change the style a little bit, which can be a little bit confusing. And like I said, on this one here, it doesn't even show the jigging pattern. So you have to, when you look at these numbers, you have to kind of figure out what's what as you're looking at it. But generally speaking, this is the order it'll go in. I mean, it'll always go in this order. It's just a matter of what they may leave in or may leave out depending on when it was made. But the 07 in this case happens to represent that this is a mini trapper, a three and a half inch size, okay? So without even measuring this and without really even looking this knife up, just because I happen to remember, I can't remember all of them. There's two, there's way too many. But I know that the second number, okay, if it's a lower number, um, it's always gonna be the, the blade amount, okay? So obviously if there's two blades and you have a two in there, you know, towards the beginning, you know that's representing your blades, right? But the six I happen to know is bone, the 07 I happen to know is a three and a half inch mini trapper, okay, because this was previously looked up. So this is just how you can figure out what what pattern you have, you know, and all the information about it, right? So if you looked at this and maybe it had a an antler type look and was stained brown, you may think it's stag, but you look it up and by just by looking at the, the tank stamp, you figure out that, all right, well, that's not genuine stag, that's bone that's recreated to look like stag. That's important information for collectability, you know? It's also just for your, your own information, for your own curiosity of what it's made of. Now, this doesn't say anything about color, but obviously you can, you can see the color unless you're colorblind. This is a, a red stained bone. And with all the bone, you'll see that the most prominent, deeper color is more towards the middle. And as you get towards the bolsters, they always lighten up. And this is more of a fiery orange, which is pretty cool. Sometimes on red stain uh, towards the end, and especially on cheaper knives like Rough Riders and so forth, you'll see the stain really turns pinkish before the end. Doesn't mean it's bad, doesn't mean it's poor, it's just the, the stain they use. But generally speaking on um, case knives, it stays red throughout and then gets a little orangey towards the bolster. But anyway, just I thought this was pretty fascinating. I love these knives. I love them. Uh, I love all knives. I have an appreciation for all types of knives and these are no different. They really are beautiful. They're works of art. They're very well made and uh, they're pretty cool. So I want to teach you guys how to read them because I think a lot of you guys have these sitting in drawers collecting dust and maybe you can, you know, rekindle that little bit of uh, love you used to have for them and just learn about them. It's always good to learn, right? So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I thank you very much for watching as always and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take it easy.